some reaction then tonight. Joined now by leader of the ACDP, Reverend Kenneth Misha. Rev, good to have you and thank you very much Al, for your time. The position of South Africa then is that they are recalling some of the uh, diplomats in Tel Aviv for consultation. Uh, others saying this is signaling uh, a, an imminent uh, recall even or, or, or shall I say the kicking out literally of the ambassador. Uh, uh, to uh, uh, the, um, the Israeli ambassador to South Africa. What's, what's, what's your reaction to this latest move by the South African government? They're saying they're signaling their concern as South Africa to what is happening there. Well, good evening, Tabo, and to all the viewers at home. I think consultations should always be welcomed. If government is honest, consultations that they have said are going to take place when the diplomats from Tel Aviv are back home have to take place. And they should inform the country about the developments and how far those consultations are proceeding, what is taking place. I think people want to know. So we welcome, as the ACDP, an opportunity for them to consult with the diplomats. The Ambassador is said to have made remarks that are akin to those of the U.S. ambassador without uh, proper proof and going on public platforms. They're saying insulting the South African government and civil society in our own backyard, making his position uh, very untenable. Well, obviously, uh, ACP does not believe in the politics of insults. I think if we have issues to resolve, uh, we should do so respectfully. So it is regrettable. I did not hear those comments. It is regrettable, regrettable if it is true, that there are people that were uh, insulted. We believe negotiating and uh, discussing, differing on issues based on whatever beliefs should be done with respect to other people. That is the position of the ACDP. Do, do you think that would justify him being removed from, from South Africa? Well, I think and, uh, insults are happening all the time. Do you know that even in Parliament, um, insults are taking place. Leaders insult one another. But how you respond to insults is something that is debatable. I think uh, I would want to know what the man said and why he said that before one can take a decisive action. Let's listen to what a person is saying. Maybe if he sees or realizes that he indeed insulted people, he will apologize. We don't know that. So I'm saying if we want to resolve anything, it has to be done peacefully we, while we respect each other and give each other space even to differ from whoever we are uh, discussing with or debating with. So the reason for the consultation, South Africa saying they want to determine how they could intervene. Do you think South Africa has got means to, to, to help uh, in the situation in, in Gaza? I think if South Africa talks about intervening, they need to explain what they mean. Because they are losing credibility when they want to go in any form of conflict while they're taking sides. Anybody who wants to mediate has to be a trusted, objective mediator. And that person will be successful. I don't think South Africa will be successful because they discredited themselves by condemning one side and not condemning the other. As you know that this war that's taking place that we regret particularly uh, uh, when innocent lives are lost was started by Hamas when they abducted people, they say killed people, they say they raped people. I mean, some of the people that were marched in the street, in the streets, humiliated in the streets, in public. Other countries, other governments condemned what they saw. Because even prisoners of war 
You don't treat them that way. Mm. But South Africa refused to do that. And yet, when Israel responds, they condemn. So I'm saying is South Africa is discrediting itself. You to be a trusted mediator, you must at all times be objective and show that your motive is indeed to bring about reconciliation or peace and not to try to strengthen the other, the hand of one against the other. We're talking on the region of close to 11,000 uh, fatalities. 50% of those, we've been told, are actually children. Do you think that is a, a proportionate response to the uh, October 7th attack? Yeah, well, I think one of the first things we need to do is that there is evidence that Hamas is using women and children uh, for their protection as human shields. So what South Africa should do is to tell their friend Hamas, if you are mad enough, get into the streets, make sure that your children and wives are out of the way, rather than use them as human shields. Those numbers are too high. They are very unfortunate, regrettable. And um, ACDP would like to see women and children being taken out of the conflict. But we are told that Hamas will never do that. And actually, there are some videos I saw today of human bodies in the streets of Gaza, in the northern parts of Gaza, and it is said that there are people, there are women and men and children who are trying to run away out of the conflict. Mm. But Hamas doesn't allow them because they need them as human shields. So South Africa, I refer to South Africa again because South Africa wants to, to get involved. Okay, ask them. I've never heard them make a statement. I've never heard any international uh, leader or member of the community saying, please, if two men want to fight, keep the children and the women out, rather than hide behind children and women. Now, when a person acts like that, I think he's a coward. He wants to fight, but he wants to involve children and women who are not involved in the fight in the first place. What? So I think the first thing, the first thing that South Africa should do they must also condemn using women and children as human shields. Yeah. There is the attack, which you, you mentioned. There is the response. And now there is what the international community is also looking and saying. It is almost a collective punishment to say, well, we will punish all of you because Hamas is using women as shields and children. Yeah. Is, is, is that your concept of... Uh, justice and fairness? No, definitely not. But I'd say at the same time that if Hamas and Hamas is using women and children and they want to fight, what should those that are reacting do? Should they say we are going to stop doing what we are doing? We are going to stop fighting to get all the hostages back home? Just because Hamas does not want to let women and children go find places of safety, if they are hiding around them, unfortunately, particularly in places where they are fi firing the rockets from, we have heard over the years that they have storehouses, warehouses, hiding places under hospitals, on UN property, why does the UN not say, I will take an international group of leaders, including from Israel, to inspect these venues, to make sure that Hamas does not use these premises to shoot rockets at Israel. They don't do that. And the question is, do they really care about these women and children, or are they just making political statements for the sake of making a statement? I think the international community needs to speak out very strongly, address both sides. Yeah. Say to Hamas in particular, you are not allowed 
to use women and children as human shields. The other group, Israel on the other side, is not using women and children. Commend them for doing that, not using women and children as um, human shields. Yeah. But Hamas is doing that. The international community is not condemning that. It's not saying that. They only say, but this is collective punishment. Um, they are reaction, and it's not justified um, because they are causing more human lives. Yeah. I don't deny the fact that, unfortunately, there are many uh, honest and uh, innocent people who lose their lives in the process. Yeah. But I think Hamas has the power to stop that from happening. Personally, I think Hamas has the power to stop this. If Hamas can be told, stop it, stop using women and children, and the international community or the UN itself can say, let us make sure that Hamas does not, hide, does not use women and children when they fight against Israel, yeah. and then and they say, any observer want to come come and see that Hamas is not doing that? Then we can say, Israel, you are wrong. But, Israel, stop doing but, that. But that's, exactly but what, what, that's what I wanted to come to, Rev. One would listen to you now and say, but you, you are equally doing exactly the same thing in, in your analysis by taking only one posture of condemnation, which is of condemning Hamas, but saying nothing about the... Uh, international flouting of international laws and UN resolutions uh, and uh, what the ANC has now characterized as genocidal airstrikes? Well, obviously, the, the ANC has the right to use whatever terminology they use. And uh, there are a number of issues. Cabo, there are some issues that the international community is avoiding that they have to do if they are serious about stopping the war. You know that there was a, the Arab League met in Sudan in 1967, after the Six-Day War. And their outcome, it's famous, you can Google it right now, you can check Wikileaks Wikile right now, you can see it, they said, no peace with Israel. That was from the Arab League in Sudan, 1967. No recognition of Israel. Thirdly, no negotiation with Israel. To negotiate a settlement takes two people or two groups of people. So if one group says no negotiation, what are you going to do? One group says no recognition. The UN accepted that to recognize Israel as a state. But now the Arab League has came with, come up with a statement, and I also saw in the Pal Palestinian charter. Yeah. Hamas charter. Same thing. Yeah. Let's no let's, recognition. Let's, let's take a of break. The state of we will ESCDP leader, Reverend Kenneth Mission. Before the break, Rev, you, you are raising the question of the rejected settlement, right? And yes, part sir. of the reason of the rejected settlement that is being given is that the, the, the settlement would have only recognized the importance of the Middle East to the Jews and not recognize the importance of the Middle East to the Jews, the Christians, and the Muslims, and others uh, that would need to be protected also in that space. So things like the, 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 the settlements that uh, would have uh, been, been, been uh, uh, put there in Gaza, part of the agreement would need to recognize that those settlements are illegal and, and, and therefore would need to be removed. And hence the reason why the settlement would have been rejected by the Palestinians. And we are not just talking about settlements. We are talking about Israel as a state. When they say no recognition of Israel as a state, that is very serious. And the international community is aware of this, but they are saying nothing about it. I've heard on a few occasions South African Minister of International Relations say, even the President say, that they want a peaceful two-state solution where Israel and the Palestinians will live side by side in safety and security. I mean, those are nice words to come from the mouths of the politicians. 
But do they mean that? I don't think so. And the reason I say I don't think so, how can you live peacefully side by side with someone who does not want to recognize your right to live next to them? There are people who have said within the Palestinian leadership, no Israel. There are even maps. I have gone to Israel and also some moved into Bethlehem and shown the maps, Palestinian maps that show no Israel because the plan is to annihilate Israel, to remove it from the face of the earth. And unfortunately, that is not going to happen. Nobody will be able to do that. I say to my friends who question me when I say it's not possible that an attempt should be made by anybody who wants to make sure that this happens, to remove God from his throne. Attempt it. Anybody who can succeed, maybe they will succeed to remove a, 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 a Israel from the face of the earth. But the fact is, the God of Israel has said, no weapon formed against Israel shall prosper. So, anybody who dreams about Middle East without Israel, that is the dream that will never come true. Yeah. The best thing is to say, let's accept each other's right to exist. And then we start negotiating other things. Yeah. Negotiate from the platform of every one of us has the right to exist. Let's be good neighbors to each other. That's what I would propose yeah. from the ACB. So, so, so one would say... That degree of self-determination would mean um, you need to allow the Palestinians to have an equal degree of self-determination. What kind of self-determination mm -hmm. if you are having them living in a almost an, an enclave, a prison, open air prison of some sort where their movement is continually being guarded. They can move in and out. There are certain products that are not allowed to come in and so on and so forth. If that's the self-determination that you're talking about, it should be self-determination for everybody. No. Uh, Tabo, I think the best thing that we need to, to uh, work towards and agree about is that every person has the right to a life of peace, number one. And number two, we have to accept we have that right. But now, if you go into areas and explode petrol bombs. You know, some people talk about the security walls as apartheid walls. But ask the question, what led to that? You had suicide, suicide bombers go to weddings and blow themselves, go into buses where their children, school children and women blow themselves. And the people said, no, 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 no. If these people, we want to live peacefully, Next to are bombing and killing innocent people, we need to take some measures. So I don't believe if there is no threat of violence, the measures that are being taken now would be taken. So let them commit themselves, both sides. Well, the other side, they don't uh, blow, blow people up. And they don't blow themselves in buses and so on. But those who have done that, and there is record, let's check who has been doing that. And those who have been doing that should be told, guys, we want you to live peacefully side by side. Please stop exploding, yeah. your, uh, bombing yourselves, causing petrol, throwing petrol bombs in public transport, because there, obviously, you are killing innocent people. Yeah. If an agreement can be reached, that that's not going to happen. I believe a number of these measures that have been taken will be relaxed. But what, what, what about countries like the United States who keep sending armor to Israel. They are arming Israel, sending money, sending ammunition uh, to Israel to, to attack other people. Well, they have seen the thousands of rockets that have been uh, thrown, flown into, shot into Israel. Now, all these records, th those rockets, when the world was seeing all those rockets being shot into Israel, None of the international communities stood up and said, oh, Hamas, stop that, stop that, stop that. They kept quiet until Israel responded. And I don't think that that's fair. Yeah. So I think the countries that are helping Israel are saying, defend yourselves.
But these, are, these, these are countries with quite advanced rev, uh, ammunition and military strategies. I mean, if you yourself have been shown videos of uh, how Hamas is using women and children to shield itself, they surely have far more advanced technology to even go into those caves and attack Hamas where Hamas is and not bombard schools, hospitals, ambulances, and, and, and just civilians at, at random. Um, I, 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 I would agree with you that they are, their weapons and their technology is advanced. But you know that the people who know terrorism well, they said with some of the best technology, it's very difficult to contain terrorism. A person who pretends that they are not, they are what they are not. You know, when you have an army, you can see that's a soldier is coming for me. That's the guy I must fight with. That's the guy I must stop. But a person who comes to like a shopper, holding a basket, putting some stuff in there, waiting for the right women to blow themselves up. I mean, the best technology in the world can't stop there. So it is unfortunate that there are people who have gone to such extreme measures. I think what we can do together, my brother Cabo, is to talk to the South African government, take our message of peace. And this message of peace yeah. should obviously be directed to both sides, but say to Hamas, you are the ones that are using women and children. Please stop that. Because you are causing the retaliation, and some people say it is disproportional, okay? But the fact is they are, they are retaliating in order to protect their own people. So this measure, this thing can be contained if Hamas, I believe. Uh, the, 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 the soldiers, IDF, they can easily stop once they say the leaders are arrested or are eliminated. We are not going to see rockets again being flown into Israel, targeting innocent people. We are not going to see innocent people arrested, being taken as hostages, and being uh, dragged in the streets uh, while they are bleeding, persecuting them, raping them. All these things, if they are stopped, this war, I believe, can stop. So South Africa is, is in a position to can assist to stop the war. And for them to be able to do that, they should not spare Hamas, who is their friend. But they should say, you are the one. Let's find out who is the one who is using women and children as uh, human shields. It is wrong. Using women and children as human shields, it is wrong, Tabo. You and I, let's send that message clear to uh, men, a lady Pando. No, 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 no. That thing is wrong. Tell Hamas to stop using women and children as human children. Remove them Re from the places where you are shooting rockets yeah. because innocent children are Re going Re to die I, in the I, 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 I would rather send a message that says there needs to be peace in the Middle East uh, on both sides at this particular point. But I appreciate I your agree time. With you. Thank you very much uh, for both coming sides. on and thank you very much uh, for joining us tonight.